Hey folks, Scott Hampton here, aka Exaltron. I am an instructor at Garnish Music Production, and I'm here today with a quick tutorial on my lazy approach to using colors in Logic. Now, if you're like me, um, if you're not big on templates and organizing your projects and changing the colors, we all know how to change the colors of regions, but I'm a little bit lazy, so I usually um, leave the uh, default as is, and I end up with a lot of uh, these green MIDI regions and blue audio regions. A lot of my projects are gonna look like this. Ugh. So what we can do about this is we can switch to what's called auto assign. And auto assign, we go into Logic Pro Preferences, I'm going to go into display, choose tracks, and here we have track color static. That's giving us our default green and blue regions. If we choose auto assign, um, we've got two choices, 24 colors and 96 colors. The 24 colors just means you're going to get a larger shift between colors. 96 will give you a much more subtle shift between colors. So I usually like to choose 24. We can do this with markers as well. It's going to work the same way. So I'm going to close out of preferences. I'll get rid of all these ugly regions gone. And then I'll start adding some new software instruments. And every time I add a new one, I'm going to get a slight shift in color. So we're going into this lovely shade of teal, and then we're going to get a more blue color. And then if I were to record, I'm just going to simulate recording here. I'm going to control click in this track and say, create MIDI region. And you'll see that anything you record is going to match the color of your track. If you can't see the color of your track, that's easy enough to fix. We're going to control click on the track header. We're going to say track header components and we're going to choose track color bars. That track color bars is what is giving us these colors right here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The markers work the same way. We can show our global tracks. We can start adding some markers. It's going to add it right where your playhead is and it's just going to give you a slight shift in color every time you add a marker. So that's pretty much it and my projects are much more colorful. Um, I still need to do a lot of labeling and organization and stuff like that, but at least this gives me um, an uh, an alternative to having all my MIDI regions be green and all my audio regions be blue. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. I've got a lot of new content coming out. So I'm working on this um, really cool new approach to tutorials. These are totally interactive tutorials. They are logic projects. They are self-contained. I'm going to do videos with these as well. Uh, but these you can pretty much download and do this on your own. Every track is a chapter. So for example, in chapter three, we're making a synth sound from scratch. This is all retro synth. Um, and I go through step by step what all the different waves are, um, how to work your envelope, how to add a filter, um, lots of great screenshots in here and lots of great explanation of what all of these parameters are doing. So even if you have experience working with RetroSynth, um, even if you have some experience working with Synthesis, this will definitely help you to sort of like fill in any gaps in your knowledge and round out your understanding of Synthesis. Um, that should be coming out in a few weeks with the first video. I'm going to do probably one video for every, say, two or three chapters. We're going to see how it goes in terms of time. Um, but that will be out soon, so please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification button if you want to receive notifications. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Exaltron, signing out.